Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today is our last day of our novena to the Holy Spirit. And this Sunday, we will be commemorating Pentecost Sunday. And Jesus reminds us today that the culmination of the Easter season is always giving us the gift of mission. We are being sent to mission. This is the culmination of our faith. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharistic celebration, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities 
may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, My brothers, although I had done nothing against our people or our ancestral customs, I was handed over to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving the death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar even though I had no accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and to speak with you, for it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord is his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His searching glance is on mankind. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just, he loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. I will send you the Spirit of Truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? 
what concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word spread among the brothers that that disciple would not die. But Jesus had not told him that he would not die. Just what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things and has written them. And we know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Jesus did. But if these were to be described individually, I do not think the whole world would contain the books that would be written. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are now towards the conclusion of the Easter season. Today is our last day of the Novena to the Holy Spirit, and tomorrow is already Pentecost Sunday. Tonight, we celebrate in our parishes and communities the Vigil for Pentecost. That is why our readings today also are the conclusion. In our first reading, the conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles. We have been reading for the whole Easter season from that book. And now we are at the end. We are reading the conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles. And also our gospel today, we have been hearing for the whole Easter season from the gospel according to St. John. And today, we read the last verses of the gospel of John. My dear brothers and sisters, we will notice that in our two readings today, both conclusions of two books. We read that they conclude with mission. And this teaches us something, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Easter season culminates and concludes with mission. This also teaches us something about our faith as followers of Jesus, our faith as Christians, our life as Christian. Our life, therefore, should also always end and culminate with mission. Itinuturo po sa atin ng ating mga pagbasa ngayong araw na ang ating buhay bilang mga Kristiyano, tagasunod ni Jesus, ay lagi dapat magtatapos, laging magbibigay misyon. In our Gospel reading today, we hear about the beloved disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And you can see that some disciples are seemingly envious of him. Even Peter, they asked, what about him, the disciple Jesus loved? They were asking what will happen to him, as if they were trying to see if he was the favorite really of Jesus. But see, my dear brothers and sisters, toward the end of the Gospel of St. John, he presented himself. He said, it is this disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, who testifies to these things and has written them. Nagpakilala siya sa huli. Siya pala 
ang alagad na minahal ni Jesus. Pero sa pagpapakilala niya, hindi lang naman siya nagmalaki. Hindi lang para inggitin ang ibang mga alagad at sabihin, ako ang beloved, ako ang paborito. It did not end there. His being beloved is not just something that He wants to relish in. His being beloved is a reason for Him to do mission. Ang pagiging kanyang minamahal na alagad ni Jesus ay hindi labang isang dahilan para magmayabang siya, para maging masaya siya sa kanyang sarili. Minahal siya ni Jesus, kaya mas malaki ang misyon na kanyang ginampanan. Siya ang nagsulat ng Ebanghelyo na ito. He felt he was beloved by God, and therefore, it should culminate in mission. He felt so loved by God that he wanted to share this love to others. The love of God for us should always culminate in mission. And this is also what we hear from the conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles. St. Paul finally reached Rome sa hinabahaba ng mga biyahe ni San Pablo kung saan-saan siya napunta mula Jerusalem papunta sa iba-ibang lugar at narating niya ang pinaka-capital ng imperyo. He reached Rome finally. But he reached Rome not just to escape from Jerusalem. In fact, he was a prisoner. That is why he reached Rome. He said, I am still in chains. I am wearing these chains. And for two years, he was in house arrest. But did it stop him from doing his mission? Sinabi ba niya sa kanyang sarili na malayo na ako sa Jerusalem sa aking mga kaaway? Dalawang taon na kung naka-house arrest dito sa Roma, mananahimik na lang ang buhay ko. He did not stop. Even if he was a prisoner in Rome, he was still preaching the Word of God. People were coming to him. The Jews in Rome were coming to him and he did not stop preaching even if it may cause his death. He still continued his mission. The culmination of the travels of St. Paul is Rome. And upon reaching Rome, he did not say, I will already stop. I have reached my destination. No. The destination is the mission. My dear brothers and sisters, we are reaching the conclusion of the Easter season. And this is not just reason for us to rejoice, to relish on the gifts that we have received. No. The culmination always of Easter is Pentecost. The coming of the Holy Spirit so that He could send us to mission. I hope, my dear brothers and sisters, that as we feel that we are loved by God, just like the beloved disciple in our gospel reading today, every day we feel loved, 
whenever we receive blessings, we thank God. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Thank you, Lord, for this love that I feel, that I receive, that my family receive. Every time we are able to say that, that is not yet the end. It should always culminate to mission. The blessing given to you by God is not the end of that blessing. It should always be geared towards mission. That is the culmination of whatever we received from God. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, let us be reminded that the culmination, conclusion of our lives as Christians is always mission. Let the Holy Spirit inspire us and strengthen us so that whatever love, whatever blessing, whatever gift we receive from Jesus should not end with us, but it should always culminate in mission. Amen. Jesus, who himself came to people as a servant in obedience to his Father, wants us to keep God's interests above all things. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may be true servants acting with the same concern that Christ showed to his disciples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That government leaders may be faithful to their commitments and fulfill their duties in the spirit of love and service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who experience difficulties may receive strength from the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may realize that their suffering, undertaken in union with Christ, can be turned into blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That deceased relatives and friends may enjoy the peace in God's eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, your Son placed your interest above all else, even to the extent of suffering for humankind. Grant that we may always honor Him by making Him most important in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May the Holy Spirit coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament since the Spirit Himself is the remission of all sins. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after His resurrection, He plainly appeared to all His disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that He might make us sharers in His divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art who in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be made new in holiness of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now pray the ninth day of our novena to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. In the Trinitarian plan of salvation, the Father draws to us the Son, whom the Holy Spirit reveals and disposes us to welcome. As the Lord and giver of life, the Holy Spirit brings about our rebirth in baptism as the Father's adopted children in Christ and as sharers in divine life. Jesus calls the indwelling Holy Spirit our paraclete, which literally means one who stands beside us as a counselor, consoler, advocate, and friend. The Holy Spirit leads the church into all truth and is the source and dynamic force of the church's unity and mission. It is no wonder then that in every age, the fruitfulness of the church depends on the renewal of the mystery of Pentecost in the minds and hearts of the believers. This is the renewal that we seek in our novena. May the Holy Spirit rekindle the grace of baptism and confirmation in every Catholic so that all may live the Christian life with fervor and zeal. Let us all together pray. Holy Spirit of the Father and of the Son, Spirit of love, enlighten us, strengthen us, guide us, and comfort us. You who pray and act in us, make us know the Father by, by contemplating, contemplating the, the face, face of, of the Son who reveals Him, him so, so that, that we may proclaim the divine love of the Most Holy Trinity. Make our life a sign of love. Make the Church a living word, an uplifting presence, a consecration of the world to the Trinitarian love that creates, redeems, and sanctifies now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mary, star of the new evangelization. Pray for us. We would like to thank all of you for joining us in this celebration of the Mass this morning and also for all those who have joined us for the nine days of our novena to the Holy Spirit. We pray that the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit fill us as we celebrate Pentecost this Sunday. And we also urge everyone to continue doing our mission, our part in sharing and caring for one another. We would like to thank all those who have given for the community pantry here in Intramuros. And now, uh, we are not sharing not only here in Intramuros, but uh, the Manila Cathedral has uh, become like a hub where donations are given and the different parishes nearby come here to uh, get a source and supply for their community pantries. And so we thank everyone who have uh, continually shared with us uh, especially for the food that we are sharing to our brothers and sisters. And we also uh, would like to thank all of you who have 
continued uh, supporting the Manila Cathedral in our mission, those who have given their donations through their mass offerings also, maraming salamat po, and may the Holy Spirit continue to make our mission, our sharing, and our caring for one another really fruitful for the evangelization of the peoples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Reina ng langit, masaya, Alleluia, anak mong binala sa tuwa, Alleluia, ay nabuhay na mabuli, Alleluia, ipanalangin mo kami sama, Alleluia.